I am standing in front of Jen's apothecary cabinet here in the house. And uh, so I'll start out by saying we really, it was kind of tough to leave the cabin because that area was so beautiful. We had some good friends there, but um, it just was turning into more of a neighborhood feel where we were at our cabin. And there's a lot of Airbnbs there. And really that place was never meant to be our forever home. We kind of bought it for like a little escape place to go on the weekends, but then we moved into it and, uh, you know, did a lot of work there. So we're, we don't regret going there at all. It was some of the greatest times there. And like I said, we had some good friends, but, uh, ultimately it wasn't our forever home. It was all hilly and the properties were spread out. So, you know, we had tools and things in different areas here. We have this little ranch house in Eastern Washington. Uh, we have 3.97 acres, and the funny thing is the cabin was 3.97 square feet before we added the basement. Pretty, there's a lot of outbuildings out there. The neighbors have cows on the side pasture of our place and the back pasture. And next year we want to get a cow or two, and we want to get some goats. So, yeah, we're loving it here. We have family over in this area and extended family, so. We kind of like have a built-in tribe here, so it's been really great. We've had people coming by that we haven't seen for quite a while, and uh, you know, it's just, we've had people helping us over here, which is great, our family and friends. So yeah, great setup, and we finally found our forever home. I can't tell you how great it is to have space in a house. After being in a 400 square foot cabin, this place felt like a castle. I mean, it's not that huge, but it just felt, felt huge to us because our cabin was the size of the living room before. So, and then having property that's all flat with the outbuildings and everything, dream come true. I got a shop in the back, I have a two car garage too. So we've got storage galore. There's other outbuildings, chicken coops, goat pens, things like that. And then we have an orchard and a giant garden space. Uh, apparently the previous owners had like their family and two other families gardening out there. So I'll take you out there and show you that. It's a big old garden space and a lot of fruit trees. And yeah, we're just loving it. We basically traded the cabin and a few other properties for this place. So we're mortgage free. Everything has been working out incredibly. Jen is still working on the west side of the mountains. She just interviewed for a job over here. So fingers crossed, uh, but at any rate, she's going to keep looking over here because we want to get her over here as soon as possible. That's what we're looking at right now. And uh, let's go outside and I'll show you around. Now we are on a road that uh, connects two main little roads or little highways. So this road can be busy in the morning and in the evening. And uh, there's hay fields across the way. So when they're uh, harvesting the hay, then uh, you got a lot of hay trucks going back and forth. Doesn't really bother us a whole lot. Um, it can be a little challenging for creating videos, I think. Well, it, it's gonna be because cars going by, but we'll, uh, we'll get through this. Anyway, so we've got this front garden area. Jen's been working on this. She's been, we dug out some of this and she continued digging out the rest and laying brick and planting a bunch of her plants in here. We still have some sod here to, take care of and get out of here and she did this brickwork here and all of this has irrigation that uh sprinkler system so it's set up to a really nice system where you can set the day the time and how long you want it to go so we have a irrigation ditch right in the front and then this pump supplies this line or this line this line goes over to this fence, follows the garden. So you have a bunch of different spigots along there to water the garden and the fruit trees. Then it works its way back there and goes back to the trees. And I'll take you back and show you the, the line that runs down there through the pasture. Um, we are on a well, so uh, that's how we get our regular house water. So the other irrigation line, this one here, it runs all through the yard and around the house and like I said, it's on a really nice uh, timer setup. So it'll water like this front zone first and water the lawn, water in here. Then it'll water this section. 
and uh, yeah, it's really nice just to set it and forget it. Along the road here, we have peach trees and apple trees, and then we've got two cherry trees over here. We just planted our two pawpaws here to uh, kind of keep filling in the orchard. We plan on getting more trees. That's an apple tree. Then we have apple trees down here. I believe this is an elderberry Jen's gonna plant. We have apple trees here. And then a plum tree. And another plum tree. And then on the back side, there's two more apple trees back there. We also have this big old crab apple tree that drops thousands of crab apples. We're gonna figure out how to utilize those. Right now they're just falling. I'm gonna get all those picked up. Um, there's also a crab apple tree in the front. Now this is a different kind of crab apple. They're a little bit bigger, kind of orangey yellow. And uh, I wanna say they were a descendant or something like that it was the name of them. This weekend, our son and grandson were out here and spent the night and we put up this little uh, arbor thing and Jen's gonna have the hops grow on this, have blueberries grow in there. We're still gonna plant everything in here and get the garden ready. This side of our yard over here is fenced off and this is where the cows are hanging out right now, but they can hang out back there in the back pasture too. So the garden area, backyard, this side area and back there, all part of our property. We'll go say hi to these big girls. Hey girls. The little guy back there is a little bull and that's his mama over here. And then those two are mom and daughter laying down there. So yeah, here's the irrigation that runs along this side, along this fence, so you can water the pasture over here, water the garden. And apparently back here, they uh, used to grow a lot of corn and other stuff back here. They would grow corn one year, and I don't know what they'd grow the next year, but they kind of alternated. So this area is another huge area we can grow some food. It'd be nice to grow like some sunflower seeds and uh, corn to make our own chicken scratch. So this is the backfield that runs to that little green tree where the fence is back there. Not this fence, but the next one. So this pasture here is part of our property and the neighbor has his big water can and other sprinklers back here to keep the cows watered. It's got a hot wire going here, but they can get through the middle and go over into this section. This whole area was overgrown when we moved in. The whole garden area from the road to here, all this here, it was all just uh, weeds about as tall as me. And I bought a brush hog and just started hitting it in the morning and then the night. It was really hot at the time when we moved over here. So in the daytime, I would just not do it. But morning and night, I kept hitting it, got it done. Around the outbuildings was all overgrown. Um, so that's a little, they had goat and sheep. And so not sure if they kept any sheep out here, but the cows use that once in a while. And then, uh, this is a chicken coop here that they had pretty good sized chicken coop. The door goes into like this hallway where you can keep all the feed and then it goes into another door into the actual coop. And then right over here is like a one car garage. And that is the designated shop. So right now, it's pretty packed full. We're still trying to get moved in, but I started getting things organized in here. So again, everything's gonna be in one place, all the tools, really gonna be nice. I got this John Deere lawn tractor, which is incredible. I'll do a video on that coming up soon. And then over here, this was all fenced in. When we looked at the place, there were gates and things all over in here when we moved in they were all gone so we probably should have put that in the paperwork that we wanted all the gates to stay and all the fencing anyway this is the area where they had goats and sheep or one of the two or both in here there was another chicken coop here apparently Throwing. apparently they did meat birds and then they had their regular egg birds and then there's another 
goat sheep paddock thing here. So yeah, this will, uh, we'll get this up and running again. I kind of would like to move the chicken coop or just build a new one right here. So it's closer to the house and then closer to the compost bin. Um, my grandson and I just built that compost bin this weekend, which was really cool because I uh, could teach him how to use the skill saw and the drill and uh, just let him build something. We do have like a couple of frostless faucets out here and they do work. So those will be handy. I love having our grandson out here because uh, he can drive the lawn tractor. He got really good at that this weekend or last weekend. And uh, he could drive it around and haul stuff. He gets to build stuff and he loves having the cows here. We go feed them apples and try to scratch their ears and stuff. So it's uh, just a great thing to have him out here and have him be able to learn this kind of stuff and be in this environment. Here's the covered back porch. Um, it's shaded by these trees and by the roof in the summertime so you can sit here and enjoy the view out there of the ridge and the cows and uh, yeah we're just loving it. Next year we'll have chickens and uh, hopefully some cows, hopefully some little goats and turn this place into a little mini farm. Over here is the garden shed. So again lots of storage can keep a lot of the garden stuff in here. We do want to build a hoop house or something maybe over here, maybe after the burn pile is gone and have a burn pile somewhere else. Eventually we want to add a pear tree or two out here, maybe a few other different trees, but yeah, it's really awesome. We've already got a ton of plums off of these and apples. Uh, Jen and, and I stayed up one night till the early morning peeling apples. We haven't been here to treat the apples, so they had worms in them, so we had to cut out wormholes and all that, but we ended up making applesauce, which was pretty cool. So we'll probably have to tighten the old budget a bit while we're here. We're not rich by any means. I'm on Social Security, and uh, Jen is working, so that helps. And, uh, you know, we just, the cabin and those properties over there on the other side were such great investments, and then having uh, friends around that were contractors and knowledgeable and had equipment could really help us out. So we were able to fix those places up, develop them and uh, turn a profit on that. So again, we're just super grateful for all of that and for the chance to be here finally at our forever home. And uh, yeah, I just, I could cry just looking at this because this is a dream come true. So yeah, it's uh, incredible. We're loving it, like I probably said that a bunch of times, but anyway, uh, hope to do some more videos coming up here and start doing it regularly. We went about five, six months with no videos because it was just trying to pound out the projects, finish things up, get things sold, try to find a place to live. Um, Jen and I were looking all over the place. I was looking at places in the woods that were like tiny homes and cabins and uh, everywhere we kind of wanted to go they're super fire danger and when we moved over here there were fires in a lot of those places that we wanted to go look at so um, we're feeling pretty good about this place it's in a little farm area and uh, yeah we're going to give it a go here and yeah make our make our mini farm. Okay, I'm rambling on now, so I will uh, talk to you in the next video, and thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.